Asphalt shingles pool test, pretty controversial topic. Let's break down what goes into it. Why some manufacturers swear by it, bring it to the expos, show it to their audiences and show how their product is different from others and why other manufacturers saying that it's a BS and it does not matter. Comment below guys what you think about asphalt shingle pull test. I read all my comments and I really value your opinion on this topic because it is a controversial one. Just a couple of weeks ago, me and my team went to Dallas for International Roofing Expo. Besides huge line <laughs> to get actually at an expo, very disappointing, but kind of cool networking time. I've never seen such a line. It took us a couple hours just to get in. But once we got in, you know, same old story, same old task. Not many things are changing in the roofing industry. Technology are very similar, except few exceptions. Of course, you have newer products, but not on asphalt shingle side of the industry. In the past three years, we have seen three manufacturers doing pull tests in their booth. Funny enough, those manufacturers usually did not include best competitor in their booth. I believe it was 2018 when we called out Owings Corning for not having Ico shingles in their booth. And gracefully, they allowed us to bring Ico shingle to their booth. And sure enough, Ico outperformed Owings Corning at their own booth. This year, almost identical uh, situation happened with a Temco. Temco was doing similar test, a little bit more creative. For some reason, they decided to add uh, gallons of water um, and pulling it from the ground. Completely different method, I guess, but the idea is the same to visually show you how strong their nail zone is. This morning, I've talked to one influencer, Instagram channel, the Roofs by Don, and they told me that they tried to convince Temco to go against Ico as well at FRCA, uh, SA uh, Expo in uh, Florida, Orlando last year, last summer, and Temco did not allow Ico at that comparison, talking about confidence in your own product. Well, two weeks ago, we have another scandal. Temco Rap in Colorado Expo was performing the test. At first, he did competition. I think they called it Competitor X. They did Competitor X tax um, uh, shingle that actually performed pretty well. And then they have Temco after that failed in their own test. I also, in all fairness, want to share that when we compared Ico and Owing Scorning at our own Roofing Insights test, I believe it was 2000. 19 or 20 when we were doing shingle guides we actually have seen Owen scoring beating Ico at the test so in all fairness all three brands who perform pull test at expos have failed in their own game have failed the test in the sense that it still performed well uh, much higher than other competitors but it failed uh, and did not become the winner of the head-to-head -head competitor we, in their game, in their mind, uh, with the best competition. So, hands down, Temco, Owings Corning, and Ico do have the best nailing zone. But for some reason, they cannot learn the lesson that showing it to people in public, you have to be transparent, you have to be open. You cannot be mad when you're failing and you have to be guaranteed positively better than anyone else or don't do it at all because all three brands have embarrassed themselves in front of the public. But Temco was the worst of the three. This year, they did not allow anyone near their booth. TJ McCormick said in comments on uh, in, uh, Facebook, I believe, on our page that uh, when Temco have seen him passing by, they were keeping an eye on him. So they were not allowed any influencer in Dallas to come and film. When my videographer came to their booth, they did not allow him to film. So what are you doing if you're not allowed other people to film? You're showing people your product. You want to demonstrate the superiority of your feature, nail zone feature, but then when people want to film it, you don't want them to do it. Why they are not letting you film? Well, number one, because the win is not guaranteed. They all have seen their shingles failing 
in their own test. So they want to keep it in the booth. They want to keep it to the audience there. They don't want to spread it on the internet. Well, if you're not sure that you're going to win, maybe stop doing it altogether. Don't piss your audience. Don't piss your community with uh, your rudeness and asking them to leave. Number two, they want to control the test. I've seen it so many times when we did it at the expo in 2018, OC was trying to convince us that someone was doing the test wrong, but they could not recreate it to win the game too. So they want to control the test. That's why they don't want to bring you shingle. They want to have everything picture perfect on camera. And that's why we consumers don't trust their commercials. Manufacturers become marketing companies who only wants to show you the film staged uh, commercials instead of real life scenarios. Number three, it doesn't represent real life scenario. It's nice and graphic to have gallon of water next to the shingle and to show how hard it is to lift. But in real life, wind does not work like that. So it's not a real life task. No one's going on the shingle on top of the roofs and jerking shingles like that. In real life, you have wind. You have to test against the wind. That's another problem with this test that we have. And I'm asking your opinion. Should we even consider pool test in the 2023 shingle guide? Comment below. I will consider this video as a focus group because if you guys tell me that we should not include pool test in 2023 shingle guide, we will not include it. But if you're saying yes, please include it. I'm going to read my comments. We're literally going to uh, count all yeses and no's and we will make a decision. Will it make it to 2023 shingle guide? The reason number four why I think it's not as important is because it's not necessarily up to manufacture how shingle will perform, but up to installer. So many installers are missing the nail zone or they don't set up uh, proper uh, pressure on their nail guns. And when that nail goes in, it goes at angle or it penetrates a little bit too deep because if you take even the best product, doesn't matter if it's OC, Ica or Temco, if you did not install it properly or your nail is not at proper angle or proper depth, guess what? That shingle will blow off just like any crappy shingles on a market. Instead of investing in installation, teaching installers how properly do it, they invest in gimmicky uh, performances at the shows, which don't make a lot of sense. And my last point for today is nailing zone is important. And it's important for nail zone to be better than competition. But you know what else is important? And I think the most important thing today is how you react to criticism. How do you react to your own failure? Are you going to become aggressive and mean and rude when people call you out? Or you're going to learn from your mistakes go to your room and improve your product. I think this test shows the ultimate business failure. When your product failed, you have to take accountability. You have to be responsible for failure. You have to apologize. You cannot be rude to your community. You cannot be mean. You cannot be aggressive. You, you have to learn. You have to listen to your audience, what the audience is telling you. And I think how we react to this test is way more important than test themselves. Because in business, no one's perfect. I'm not perfect. You're not perfect. Everybody makes mistakes. But when we do make those mistakes and people point out to them, we have to be humble and we have to learn from them. Comment below if you guys agree. What do you think about the story? I'll see you guys in the next video.